What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. Today, we're going over the companion rework slated for October 18th in the Abyss of the Goth update. I have read over this dev post a couple times, and yeah, I definitely have a good understanding of what's going on with this change. I'll be talking about what they're changing today, also my opinions on it, and basically my opinion is, I don't think this is enough, really. Uh, but that's, a, that's okay, because there's apparently going to be a part two of this. Even if I find that disappointing that this is not going to be all done in one update, we will talk about what we're getting in this update in this video. So if you enjoy these types of videos, make sure you're subbed to the channel. We do daily Warframe video uploads. I'll have a weekly reset video tomorrow and maybe some other dev workshop videos in the future too. Also, come stop at the live stream channel. I'm planning on live streaming tonight and getting some Abyss of the Goth prep in there. Yes, I actually do that kind of stuff. Don't judge me. All right, so let's get into those. I would, I would call them patch notes, but it's more of just like a preview of the patch that we've got here. So, going over the Companion Improvements and Tweaks Dev Workshop. We're going to not read it entirely verbatim, but I'll give you like the information in here. So in the next update of Visit the Goth, make an extensive changes to how you use mods and interact with your companions. This post will inform you on all the uh, what we are changing and why, as always, with pre-release information. There are some nerfs in here, guys. They haven't nerfed Charm yet. Pablo did state they will nerf Charm in the Part 2 of this. Uh, we don't know when the part two will be. I'm assuming it will be after Whispers in the Wall, so at some period in 2024. Uh, maybe if we get Echoes of the Wall, you know, like how they do Echoes updates in this game. I'm expecting that kind of thing when we get these, the Charm nerf. But their objectives here for the Companion Rework is to make pets more viable in high-level missions by making them immortal. Pets can no longer die. They can only be incapacitated. This is to make uh, less frustrating scenarios where you're relying on your pet to provide some features like Vacuum and enemy radar. The base stats on all pets have also been increased uh, significantly to help them in difficult missions. It depends what you really call a difficult mission, if you ask me. Um, uh, the, the EHP buffs they're making in this post are going to do nothing for the missions that my cat was dying in, uh, which basically was Steel Path high level missions. And I, my my viewpoint of high level is different than most players' view of high level. So I mean, it's not I'm not expecting it to be like that at all. Introduce more interactive mods that offer ways to play around your pet instead of it being mostly autonomous, like a specter. I've got a picture of those right here. There will be 14 new mods for companions that you can go and farm. Changes to many pet mods, mostly to support the first two goals of removing death states and improving basic survivability. Some mods were inconsistent in their naming or stats, and we have improved on this. We have rebalanced some mods that players felt were not good enough, or ones that we observed are so good that they've become essentials. So good they've become essentials. You mean like serration, and like point strike, and critical delay, and like every crit mod, and every base damage mod, and every elemental mod? Okay, those are essential, but having essential companion mods was a no-go? That's kind of odd to me. Um, it seems like a kind of like kind of productive mindset if, if we have so many guns that have literally required mods. But just moving on here, pet immortality. We've all seen the memes of people giving their pets funny names. I want to see the message over and over again, your pet is down. Dying cats have been demanding attention on your HUD and spontaneously combusting sentinels have been robbing you of your vacuum animal instinct for years. All that changes with this update. Going forward, pets will have health and shield values and they can be knocked out but they will not die. If you fail to revive them, when they reach zero health, pets will instead become incapacitated for a base duration of 60 seconds. So that's one of the big, big features of this pet rework right here, guys, is the new incapacitated state for companions. That work for sentinels, work for kubrows, you know, cats, dogs, all that stuff. Or it'll work for robots too, technically, the uh, robot dogs. Uh, and that's gonna be a 60 second incapacitation timer. All pets will automatically revive at the end of the incapacitation timer, and there is no limit to how many times it can happen. So 60 seconds might sound like a, uh, a long time, but there will, there will be mods that we'll discuss in this post that will reduce that timer a lot. Okay, so Gavats, Kubrows, Moas, and Predacite will collapse, collapse to the ground and can be manually revived to bring them back into action quicker, just the same as right now. But if you don't revive them in time, they'll be incap incapacitated and come back in like... 30 seconds or whatever. Sentinels cannot be manually revived, but they will fly around uh, alongside you in a damaged state while performing the automatic self-revive. So you cannot revive sentinels still. Vulpophylas, the infested foxes, do the exact same thing. Uh, they will not be 
They basically they will immediately morph into the Sentinel state, just like right now. And Korra's Venari is going to be the same as before, too. So for mods we introduced, that well, we'll also change how you can revive your, your pets. So let's actually go over that right now. They didn't really talk about too much in here. So we've gotten a preview of four of these revive mods for companions. So reminder, this will take up a mod slot on your companion's build. So let's just go ahead and look right now what mod you'd be taking off to put these on here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the Smita Cat. And let's see what we got on here that can probably get removed. Hey, would you look at that? Already I'm missing a mod slot. Um, I'm assuming that was like Link Armor or something. I've only got Link Shield and Hasten Deflection. Okay, so that is definitely probably not what I want to run there. Uh, and how much drain were those mods? Okay, so the, the most high drain one was 9 drain. And I think the 7 drain one looks better, actually. But let's just see. So we have our special ability mod here. You've got at least two of our Link mods. Maybe Link Shields will be worth it after the change, since Shield getting to buffed. you got Prime Animal Instinct. This mod can't come off. It's too useful. And we've got Tech Enhance to make it where the Smita buff lasts for longer. You got Tech Assault to give a 60% chance to not die. So that's good. And then we've got um, Synth Fiber for Equilibrium builds. I guess this technically is not needed on here, although I do like it. And of course, we have our Fetch mod at the end giving us Loot Vacuum. Oh, I forgot about Many Pet Kit. They are buffing this mod, so this will probably be very worth it. But yeah, I guess this technically, you just don't need to run Link Shields, I suppose. Or, you know, don't run Link, don't run like Maul or whatever. So it's going to be still a mod space issue. Let's go ahead and look at a different companion, like the. Uh, one of the Kubras. So I got Buck right here. And it looks like we are also missing the Link Armor mod on this build too. Okay, so we've got Buck's ability to go in Viz. We've got Vacuum. We've got three Mecha bonus mods. Okay, so I'm starting to see one of the problems here. Um, there's not going to be any room on some builds for the, the new mod. Uh, we've got mods that we need on here. I mean... Technically, you could take off a Mecha bonus mod, but that feels terrible. I mean, why do you think I'm running a Kubro for the Mecha bonus? So, what do you... What, okay, you guys tell me in the comments. On this build, what would you take off of this build to put on one of these new mods? I'm going to move on after this, but I don't think that we really, like... Honestly, DE, you should probably make it where the abilities of the companion are, like, just... There's no mod spot required for this. That would be a good companion rework right there. Maybe in part two... Modding for this, like this Kubra should just do this on, on its own. It does, I don't shouldn't have to mod for the ability. I know they have multiple abilities. But like, I mean, what's the big difference? It, like, just make it like a Sentinel, or sorry, a, uh, a uh, Spectre, where it just automatically uses its abilities. I don't mind if it has this ability I never use. If you could, if you could free up at least one mod spot on these builds, then we could actually fit on these new mods a lot more easily, so... Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments, like I said. But we're going to move on past the uh, inspecting the current build and trying to theorycraft what the new ones will be. So those are your new mods. Just quickly reading over them. Uh, there will be 14 of them, so this is just like less than less than a third of what we're getting. So duplex bond. The companion will clone itself each time you expend 100 energy. Clones live for 30 seconds, and their kills have a 50% chance of dropping an energy orb. So if you're just spamming energy, I wonder if you would have more than one clone at a time of your companion. Also, like, how good will they be? They have to get kills to drop energy orbs. I'm expecting some big damage. If I if I clone my my Kubra we just looked at, I mean, he does some pretty good damage. He can AOE nuke an entire group of enemies, and he's not even like fully uh, he's not even fully maxed out. I actually have Link uh, Hunter Synergy on there, so if I go to a high crit rifle or something like that, let's see if I have that equipped right now. I don't. Um, but basically, the way that crit link works is that it links to your primary. Critical chance link. So if I equip a really high crit chance primary, look at his crit chance right now, 43%. Let's just go to like the dread. I don't, I'm just gonna click a random one. 180% crit chance on the dread. Now my Kubra is 97% crit chance. You can see how that would work in a high level, uh, high level situation. He's gonna be doing basically orange and red crits. And if we go with some really high crit chance stuff, we got well, 225 here. Now he's at 110% crit chance. So if I get clones of this guy, I mean, he's doing purely slash, too. So he's going to totally tear through the enemies. Let's hope that actually is good. Never mind the fact that I don't really have mod space on this build. Um, but yeah, I could definitely see that being pretty strong in the future. Um, but yeah, moving on, just reading the rest of these. I'm not going to try to spend too much time. There'll be 14 of these when it comes out. Tenacious Bond. This one sounds the best so far. Headshots reduce companion recovery time by three seconds. 
if the companion's crit chance is over 50%, you gain 60% crit damage. Just look, look at Buck right there. If you got Hunter Synergy on your build, you're going to be getting crit damage all the time if you got Buck equipped. Reinforced Bond. Uh, if the companion has over 1,200 max shields or overshields, when you, then your fire rate's increased by 60%. Reloading it restores 150 overshields to your companion. So this one doesn't really give you like a re reduced revive timer. Like du Duplex Bond and Reinforced Bond don't give you reduced uh, respawn timers, unlike Tenacious Bond and spoiler alert, Aerial Bond too. These are more of just like functionality while it's alive. So DE must think we have lots of mod spots open because really like, I, I couldn't find a mod space for one of these. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take off like Hunter Synergy or something. And the last one they're showing us is Airborne Kills, decreased companion recovery timer by three seconds and nine seconds for a headshot Airborne Kill. Companion gains 49% movement speed and attack speed when the Warframe is Airborne lasting for three seconds after returning to the ground. Uh, movement speed of the companion really like, Spoiler alert, in this game, you, you can actually force the companion to teleport to you if you just move between rooms. They'll teleport right next to you, so. I don't know what the situation is here, but hey, you know what? At least Tenacious Bond is good. So we'll have to keep an eye out for the other 10 mods that will be coming out in the Abyss of the Goth update. And these will come from your uh, your open world syndicates, the conservation vendors. So think of it like the business on Fortuna, Sun on Deimos, and then Master, whatever he's called, on the planes. So that's going to be something that you can definitely farm out when this update comes out. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and start the pet stat changes. Now, I'm not going to bore you by reading all this stuff. Uh, there has been some nerfs in some areas, but there's also been a ton of buffs. And they're also changing some of the mod scaling, too. So I'm just going to give their explanation here. Uh, they're basically overall increasing the EHP and survivability numbers by 50%. This also means... Uh, Mods like Enhanced Vitality or Linked Health will be more situational and will depend on your Warframe choice instead of just linked mods all the time. Additionally, non-Sentinel pets now gain their health and shield value at level 1. So when you have a level like level 0, level 1 Kubra out, it will be full health and full armor and all that. So that's good. Makes it die less than leveling it up. Okay, so they've increased the shields on tons of companions, as you can see right here. For example, the Helmuth Charger had 85 shield, now has 330 shield. So that means it's going to have a 1.3 shield gate. If you watched the shield gate video from yesterday, that's about how much you need for a 1.3 second shield gate, which we basically have right now for Warframes. These other companions are going to not have as much shield. The Huraz Kubra has 490 shields, so they have about a, like a 1.8 second shield gate, I suppose. Uh, I don't even know what kind of Kubra that Buck is, but he's the invisible dog. So, you know, all those Kubra's getting some shield gate. Um, Predacite now has 350 shields as well. And they've got some more health, too, and they've actually quadrupled the armor of the Predacite, so that's great. Well, Pophilas did not get nerfed. That's pretty much all you need to read there. Uh, Moa's got buffed, too, but remember, you can customize Moa stats uh, actually at, at legs on Fortuna. Adarza Kavat, all these Kavats got some buffs. Hounds got some buffs. Hounds, okay, I'm going to talk about my problems with this rework at the end. Hounds did not get enough at all. That's why I'm waiting for that second part of this. But I think that we should have got more changes to the Hounds in this update, personally. And Sentinels got lots and lots of buffs. I think some of this stuff did get nerfed, though. Um, and it looks good to me, but I'm sure there's at least one nerf in there. Consistency of pet healing. So here's an actual nerf. So, companions will no longer gain health when your Warframe does in certain health-absorbing powers with the Linked Vitality Mon, formerly Linked Health. The restrictions on the following abilities and features as they apply to granting shields... Uh, health and DR to pets have been removed. So these abilities no longer work on pets. That is a gigantic L. Thankfully, Wisp Motes will still work on pets, but Warding Halo from Neja, Blessing from Trin, that's a big one, uh, Immolation for Ember, Blood Altar from Garuda, Splinter Storm from Gara, Intrepid Stand Augment Mod from Cyanax, rip, uh, Eclipse Buff from Mirage, Total Eclipse Buff, uh, Discharge from Volt, Desolate Hands from Baruch, Penance from Harrow, Thurible from Harrow, Mend and Maim from Equinox, Sainty Magistar Melee, and Protective Sling from Bazarin. No longer working companions. That is rough. Why did we? Why did that have to happen, Pablo? Or whoever changed this? This does not seem necessary. Intrepid Stand specifically? This was extremely helpful for keeping companions alive. It gave them Overguard. Um, you know, Warding Halo is good too. Like, Blessing? Why not Blessing? You, so, let me get this right. Can you, you, you can no longer grant health, shield, or DR to pets. So you can no, Blessing is worthless for pets now, from what I'm reading here. It will no longer heal them or give them DR or shields. 
I was actually thinking Trinity would have some good stuff going on here with the shield getting changes and companions, but apparently not. DE squashed that right away. So I don't understand why this had to happen. They explained it here, but it doesn't. it's not a good enough explanation to me. It's not a good reason to me that this stuff had to get changed, especially Blessing and especially a couple of these other ones too. So that did get nerfed. You can no longer use his abilities on companions. But but Wismotes are okay. Like what? Uh, Sentinel. So here's some mod changes right here. Um, the maximum shield mod is now 275, where it used to be 250. And like, you know, just little buffs, like 250 to two, 220 to 250, like... Oh, actually, no, they, they changed it from max 275 to max 250. So they actually did nerf calculated redirection. And some of these are like some smaller buffs. Metal fiber changed from 110 to 250. So here's one of the biggest changes here, guys. And this will be tying into your respawn timer for your companions. So this right here. The regen mod has been changed. Because Sentinels no longer die after reaching zero health, regen instead reduces the incapacitation timer of your Sentinel by 20 seconds and provides six seconds of invincibility after reviving. The primed version is going to make it reduced by 35 seconds. So just a reminder, the base uh, recovery time for your companions is going to be 60 seconds. So with primed regen, it will chop off 35, making a 25 second respawn time for your Sentinel. Um, now, before you get too excited, it, this mod only works on Sentinels. This mod does not work on cats, does not work on dogs, does not work on, I don't think it works on hounds even. Uh, it will only work on Sentinels. So this will be a mod that will be, like it will give you better uptime uh, and you'll probably want to have it maxed out. But the, like as I stated, the issue is going to be, um, you know, that's still 25 seconds of downtime. During those 25 seconds of downtime, it's not doing this. It's not giving them a loot vacuum. It's not going to be doing this gathering up enemies um, it's just going to be dead it's, it, it might as well just be dead because in my eyes it is it will come back in 25 seconds of course but what's stopping it from being like one shot in the next 10 seconds it will have six seconds of, six seconds of invincibility but yeah i just expect it to die immediately after that so hey you know that's what you get for playing high level missions uh it's not like de designs the game around level 10,000, but a lot of these changes do seem like they're based around level 10,000. Um, but yeah, make sure you got Prime Regen if you're planning on using a Sentinel after these changes, as it will be a must-have, a must-use mod. Even though they said they were trying to get rid of must-run and must-use mods, here we are. So yeah, big buff for Prime Regen. Um, six, six, six seconds of invincibility is also nice. The Sacrifice mod allows your Sentinel to automatically revive you. However, the Sentinel will go incapacitated instead. Adds 15 seconds to your Sentinel's incapacitation timer. If you're someone that uses this, you're still going to use it. Straight up. Repair kit has been changed from providing Sentinel 6 health per second to 18 health per second. So that's nice. Okay, so um, here is the companion. So these are like dogs and cats. Linked health has been renamed to Linked Vitality. Now we got Linked Redirection and Linked Fiber. Those are armor, health, and shields. Here's a big change right here. That's a mod you're going to definitely want to run. Medi Pet Kit has been changed from providing 6 health per second to provide 12 health per second and reduce incapacitation timer by 15 seconds. So besides these um, these like bond mods, this seems like the only way to reduce your companion's uh, respawn timer for like cats and dogs. So chop off 15 seconds, you're at 45 seconds. If you're using something like Tenacious Bond, that means you have to get like, what, like a couple kills, a couple headshot kills, it will be back already. So pretty nice. I don't think there's any cooldown on Tenacious Bond, so... Definitely run Medi Pet Kit on your companions. And also Accelerated redirection, uh, Deflection is now going to be uh, able to be equipped on any robot, which is going to give increased shield regen. It also has the new feature of minus 45% shield recharge delay. That should be quite nice for Sentinels. Uh, reminder, though, that they still get shot at quite a bit. So as far as the AI in this game works, you're probably going to want to take off the attack mods. Hey, Pablo, while we're at it, can we remove this too? Why does this have to be in here still? Um, a Sentinel will not attack unless you have these type of mod equipped, unfortunately. So that's eating up another mod slot, and it also makes the, the Sentinel draw a lot more aggro. So, yeah, I'm expecting it to die constantly still, but oh well. Um, I'm probably going to stick with the Smita and the, and the Volpa Phyla even after this, unfortunately. Until we get like a companion like ability rework. But just reading uh, some other companion mod changes, the Jin Sentinel has the ability Reawaken. It's been changed. Now uh, reduces the incapacity incapacitation timer by six seconds for each energy orb you pick up. Jin will also receive 300 points of overshield for each collected orb. I believe the overshield cap is like 3,000 or something. So after picking up 10 orbs, they'll have 3,000 over, uh, overshield when it spawns. 
Uh, and of course, they have the, the immortality feature is on every Sentinel now, so it's not going it, to. Jid was the only one that could do that before. Now, here's a big change and probably a nerf overall. The Pack Leader mod uh, now no longer gives percent based life steal to your companion, it now gives a flat amount. On a normal Pack Leader, it will be 50 health per melee hit. But they did buff it in a way. Excess healing will become Overguard, capping out at 600 Overguard. And for Prime Pack Leader, yeah, there's a Prime Pack Leader. Uh, 92 health per hit, and increase the Overguard cap to 1100. So let's just go ahead and look at what they're talking about here in the actual game. So the mod they're talking about is going to be Primed uh, Pack Leader. Now, of course, I already showed that I don't really have mod space on here to be putting these kinds of mods on, but it's this mod right here. So the way it works in game right now, heals your pet by a percentage of the damage you deal with melee attacks. 24% life steal. Think of how much damage you deal in Warframe. 24% of one of these melee hits is going to be a lot of health. So they're changing that to become 92 if it's maxed out. Looking at my Ceramic Dagger right here, the heavy attack does like, I don't know, 4,000 damage or more. So that would be an entire full heal of my companion. And now after that, it will be 92 health. From what well, Technically, daggers have two hits on the heavies. but So it would be, it would be uh, <laughs> under 200 health from two hits when it fully, fully healing them right now. Now, it would give you some overguard if you hit them enough, or rather if you get enough healing. But, yeah, these mods, um, they, de they got nerfed. They definitely got nerfed. Um, unless you consider 92 flat health better than, like, a full heal in one hit. The only thing that is actually a buff to these is the overguard aspect. Um, as you know, if you are overheal, if they are already at full health because, you know, maybe they the shield getting will be good, you'll be giving them overguard per melee hit. So 92 overguard per hit, that could give us some shield get or some invincibility time. I can see that that aspect being good, but yeah, the whole life steal part got nerfed a lot. So that's unfortunate. But yeah, maybe get Prime Pack Leader if you want to try that out. Um, Sanctuary Sentinel Sanctuary Companion mod has been improved. The health orb went from 600 health to 18 hundo. Pablo multiply it to 18,000. Honestly, that's like one bullet at like a level 80 enemy, if that. Um, Self-Destruct has been altered and renamed. Formally, this would uh, cause... Okay, so Self-Destruct, it does the exact same thing, but it's been renamed. Uh, every time your companion gets incapacitated, they do a 600 blast damage AoE to 18 meter radius. And you can just multiply this by like 10 too. Or how about more like... Yeah, how about 10? 600 times 10. Um, that should be decent for an 18 meter AoE. But if it's constantly dying, that would be maybe a little bit OP. So we'll have to see. Loyal Companion mod has been replaced entirely. Formerly, it gave a bleed out reduction link, and now it will uh, make it whenever the pet, uh, wherever, sorry, whenever the Warframe goes with 35% health, the pet will taunt all enemies within uh, the area for 30 seconds. And if your Warframe falls below 35% health, there's a 60 second cooldown between activations. So basically, if you get low health, the companion will be like, hey, shoot me instead. And then all the enemies will shoot that, and they'll instantly die. And then hopefully by that time, you can kill those enemies that were trying to kill you, and you can revive the pet, and then be on with your merry way. Hopefully, it doesn't happen twice in a minute. So that's actually kind of cool. That mod's not really used much, um, but it is only for cats and dogs, loyal companions. So keep that in mind. It won't be working on Sentinels. Um, okay, here's a nice change to the Parazon Hard Reset mod that was terrible. People were trying to tell me, like, the campaigns don't need to get reworked. Just get three three Parazon kills in 40 seconds. Even the devs thought it was terrible, okay? Look. Look right here. This was fairly difficult to achieve. Changing it to allow uh, incremental progress makes it more reliably beneficial to use this. Okay, so basically what this did, if you were to, if you were to get three Parazon kills in 40 seconds, it would, revive, it would revive your companion. Now they're making it where it, re it reduces the companion respawn timer by 10 seconds per mercy kill. So, on a, uh, for example, on a Sentinel with Prime Regen, which has a 25 second respawn timer, if you get like one Parazon kill, that thing's basically back to life. So... In two Parazon kills, it will actually be back to life because that's how long Parazon kills take to do. So, um, consider using hard reset for endurance runs. I was already, I already had it equipped in endurance runs, but realistically, I don't think I've ever used hard reset properly. Like, I've never actually done three Parazon kills in my entire life in this game. So, for endurance, we got hard reset. This one will be better for companion stuff. Power drain gives you ability strength, and then blood for energy. On a finisher, you get an energy orb. Not really, I don't even think I switch to that usually, but that's something you can technically do if, uh, if you really want to try hard. The last couple things we got on here, um, the Fired Up mod for Sentinels has been changed. Basically, you no longer have to have heat on your weapon to make it get benefits from it. Here's one for some players that actually use this goofy farm. The Spare Parts mod has been entirely replaced. 
Um, now it's called Salvage Scanner. So basically, what what the spare parts used to do, if your if your Sentinel died, it would basically give you free loot. Now it will scan one enemy every 15 seconds, and killing that enemy uh, will give extra loot. So no longer you can cheese it by just dying on purpose. And for the closing of this, uh, we have a couple of little quality of life things on here. Now, of course, reminder that those new mods will come from the the uh, the conservation vendors like the business and all that. The final closing statements here, companions can now gain overguard and overshield. Too bad Intrepid Stand got nerfed. Frost stonks go up. Sentinels now avoid fire damage from the Xmas explosion if you successfully roll out of it. And reminder that shield getting does scale with how many shields you have and also applies to Sentinels and companions. So, that's what they're changing. Now for my thoughts and opinions on this. This is not enough. This is not enough. Um, I'm looking at these companion lists right here and I'm thinking... They didn't buff a single ability. They didn't buff any of these abilities. They changed the abilities that were functionally like irrelevant afterwards. But things like the Crescent Volpophyla, this attack right here, Crescent Charge, it's still one of the worst things in the game. Uh, why would I? Why would I use this? They have to like actually. Re this is coming in 2024 apparently, but I think this should have been in this update. The entire desire to run companions that are not good right now. Is, is not being changed at all. If, if I could force myself to use this, but what would be the functionality of this? needs an entire rework, charges one enemy within 10 meters, dealing 200 puncture damage, and lifting them for 8 seconds. When I tested this last, it was for 3 seconds. It's not even properly uh, illustrated on the mod, the, the description of it. it Amplifies damage by 100%. I don't think that was even correct when I tested it last time. So, I just, look, I just clicked on a random companion. No one's going to use this after the patch. I don't. It, it, this was already one of the Volpa Phylas. How about a uh, companion that didn't have immortality before? Is that going to change anything? Probably not. So we got we get the visored predecessor. Here we go. I want I want these to be good. What does this one even do? Is it going to change anything? It's not going to change anything, unfortunately. Releases a trail of this is the one that heals Necromex. Okay. Releases a trail of spores uh, every eight seconds that heals allies and companions uh, for three hundred health over five seconds. Is that going to really be like the new meta defining ability now that it comes back from the dead? No, it's not. Acidic spittle. Blind one enemy every 12 seconds. Terrible. Terrible. This stuff is this this stuff should have honestly been in this these changes, in my opinion. Um, maybe you're overloading one dev with too much work. And uh, these because these things are all really like, all these changes are nice for the most part, but there are there's definitely a sore spot, uh, obviously, here where these abilities are not being changed. And the whole like precedent of should I run the crappy companion or the good companion? We're still gonna be running Smita. We're still gonna be running Panzer. Maybe a couple Sentinels will get used more. Maybe I'm going to probably start running Nautilus for grouping up enemies. But hey, you know, I still expect this thing to die constantly because that's just how it is. Like a couple seconds of shield getting is not going to really change much. Uh, so you make sure you got Prime Regen. You're going to need one mod spot open in your build too. So I think that they should have done more here. I don't think that the uh, loot vacuum thing is also addressed properly. A lot of players were actually looking for some kind of universal loot vacuum. And the way that it works in the game right now, when the Volpophyla dies, it feels like sometimes the, the loot vacuum will still work, but a lot of times it won't. And I believe it's intended to not work once the companion dies. So if we're just, you know, having loot vacuum active for like 10 seconds and the companion dies again, and then we have to revive it, and then we get the loot vacuum again, over and over again, it's just going to be a slog. So I hope that they can kind of like think of something where it's like, okay, maybe the loot vacuum stays even when you die. Here's Nautilus grouping up enemies. Quite nice. Um, it's like, I want to use stuff like this, but I just, I'm looking at like the, the abilities we have available to us and maybe after the next change, but hey, I was expecting a full companion rework here. Not a, we got a couple little changes here that we're going to mess with. We'll have the rest out soon. Oh, we're going to also nerf charm. That just, that doesn't feel right. It feels like you did a... A, uh, you know, you did half the companion rework, and we randomly got announced a part two out of the blue, and then they threw the, the whole Smita charm nerf in our face. So, I don't appreciate that, but I do appreciate the fact that we are getting companions coming back from the dead at least. Um, I'll at least try some stuff out, but I really don't expect the meta to change much at all. Maybe after we get these ability changes, it will, though. Either way, guys, I hope you found this video fun and helpful. I'll see you in the next video. Appreciate your support, and I'll see you on stream as well, live tonight. All right, guys, take it easy. If you made it this far in the video, thank you so much. All right, take it easy. Peace.